I'll be, I'll be slightly less optimistic yep. than that. Um, I, I think when I look at the checker statement on the facilitated customs arrangement, and again, pending more detail in the white paper, um, I find it very difficult to see any material or appreciable differences between the checkers proposal and what was proposed last summer. I, I, I really struggled to see. There, there was a, a hint that we could rely more on upfront payments rather than on a reimbursement mechanism, but, but apart from that relatively minor um, uh, uh, change, I didn't see much difference. And I think what that means is that all of the problems which were associated with the facilitated customs, mm. um, sorry, the, the, the customs partnership, um, remain live potentially in respect of the uh, facilitated customs arrangement. So I think it's worth um, just, just recalling what, what the main problems are from the EU's perspective. Mm. Um, first of all, we are talking about bureaucracy and burdens for mm. business. There's no doubt that the tracking system of whatever nature it is, whether it's upfront payments, whether it's um, reimbursement, is going to be um, bureaucratic. Um, and of course, it's easy to focus on trusted traders and the people who play the system. The problem with customs control <laughs> are the non-trusted traders and the people who yeah. do not play uh, with the system. They're the people who actually cause the problems and they're why you need the robust regulation. But from the EU's perspective, the first big question is, will we have to do this bureaucracy as well as you? Because the system will only work if EU member states also have the same systems yeah. as the UK. Now, unless there's some clever proposal in the white paper that we haven't seen yet that would say that's not necessary, it seems quite unavoidable. So effectively what we're saying to the other member states is you also need to create this bureaucracy for yourselves, for your business. So I think that's a, a major issue. The second issue, of course, is this idea of uh, taking back control cuts both ways. You know, we, we want control of our borders, say mm -hmm. the EU27. We do not contract out control over our borders mm -hmm. to a third country. And, and I think in that regard, um, the, the, the timing is pretty awful in the sense that there is the current commission dispute with the UK about allegedly lax enforcement by the UK authorities mm -hmm. against imports of Chinese goods affecting the financial, financial interests of the EU as a whole. So the timing isn't good in terms of creating the sense of trust that would make this system work. But, but it's important to remember it's not just about the finances. These are about public interest regulations for public safety, for security, for the environment. You've got to trust not just that you're going to collect the money properly, mm. you've got to trust that you're going to do all of the regulatory enforcement properly as well. And then the last problem, I suppose, is that there's only so much divergence that a system like that can tolerate. You know? If we're talking about minor differences in tariffs or minor differences in regulatory standards, mm. the system could probably accommodate that because they probably exist already in some respects anyway. Um, the problem comes if there's significant divergence between UK tariffs or UK regulatory policy and EU standards because then the strain on the system will become much more serious. And I think in this case, the implications are more serious than, for example, for Switzerland or, or an equivalent third country because of the Northern Irish problem. Because basically, if this system doesn't work, then it triggers the backstop to Northern Ireland. And that's not a consequence that comes from Switzerland, for example. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, the, <clears throat>